Hello and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about why you should focus on the process and not the outcome, or in other words, why you should focus on the journey and not the goal. So before we get into it, we'll go ahead and chat a little bit about our weekend. So Alex, how was your weekend? <laughs> um, well, it start our, our weekend started early because the Packers played on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, they could not give us a full week of satisfaction after beating Dallas and uh, crumbled our hopes and dreams and lost again on Thursday. So it was a very short-lived um, happiness from the the win and into immediate sadness, basically what we've experienced the whole season so far. Yes, yes. Um, into a game, the most frustrating is probably when it's a game that you can win. Yes. Like when it's a game that you've just lost, it's like, okay, they were the better team. Yes. But like we could have won that game. Many a times. I know people get annoyed when fans say we when referring to the team, but I don't care. Yeah. We could have won that game. Technically, we're owners. So. Yeah. We are part owners of the Green Bay Packers, if you didn't know. Yes. Um, but they could have won that game, and they just didn't. And yeah. that was hard. And then over the weekend, we watched UK play poor Ugh. multiple times. So our the teams that we're fans of right now are just not playing good basketball and football. Yes. And it's hard with basketball because there are so many games. And so your emotions are just up and down and up and down and up and down. It's high pace. Because we had the the Michigan State game, which was just sad to watch for UK. And then they blew someone out of the water. I understand it was a no name, but you know, still feels good to have a W under your belt. And then to just go into another few games that weren't the greatest. Well, there wasn't. A, it was just against one game. But you know, <laughs> Which wasn't the greatest. Uh, outside of that, got another full – this is two weeks in a row where I've been able to take Sunday completely off, which whoop has been whoop. so stinking nice um, to be able to have that full day to myself and actually get to recharge the batteries and not do the whole seven-day shindig of working every day. Um, and, yeah. But we did work Saturday. Uh, Miguel actually came over and we got some more filming done. Um, If you haven't noticed, we've been stepping it up with our videos. This year in general, we've just stepped it up a ton. Our videos have been phenomenal because of Miguel. Uh, And we- Well, and the talent. Yeah, the talent was really good too. (laughs) (laughs) According to Alex, he's the only talent. I'll ask, I'll be like, how did I do? And he's like, I don't know, only watched myself. And I'm like, okay, sounds good. Um, so we filmed some stuff. We filmed, uh, we actually did some content, not for PD, Mm -hmm. for one of our other favorite companies. Shout out (laughs) (laughs) to the cheesecake girl. Almost just stumbled all over my words, but we did some fun stuff for the cheesecake girl and we're very excited to, to see all that come together. So if you're in the local Columbus area, she has three, almost four locations about to open a fourth location, but right now she has taken break take and bake monkey bread with cheesecake dip and it's fire flames it's really good hot fire flames big fan so we filmed that and then got some other clips for pd stuff and we've really been working on b-roll and just making our videos as complete as possible so if you aren't watching our youtube videos you should what you doing you should be watching them giving us a thumbs up all that jazz yeah So headed into this episode, talking about the process and not the outcome, this is something that we run into a lot when it comes to clients, um, especially because we're talking about a fitness journey. And oftentimes we're really looking at what we want to accomplish, which is incredible. You should set goals and you should have goals for yourself and have outcomes that you're trying to attain. But in the pursuit of those outcomes, it's very important to focus on the process or the journey before you get to those outcomes or goals. Right. I think that it's it's very easy because it's the the north star of, of what you're trying to accomplish. And really, once you get to that point, you realize that um, the more fulfilling aspect of it all was actually the process in and of itself rather than um, the goal that you were seeking. And so I think that digging into the nuance of all that and, and the thought process processes that that uh, em- embarks upon in those things is, is really important. Yeah. So with you saying that it's more enjoyable or you find more joy, have you in the past focused more on the outcome and seen the difference or what has that looked like in your life? I think so. I think that, um, and it's, 
I feel like we have almost an expedited course in this because working with clients that it is, everything is is very goal-driven in what we're doing. Um, we get more repetitions of, of seeing the difference between the two of uh, the clients who have such a greater success are the ones that are able to focus on the process and just uh, tick the boxes every day to attain the goal that they have rather than the person who's just like, I wanna lose 15 pounds. Why haven't I lost 15 pounds yet? Why, 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 why? It's like, well, you're not, doing what you need to do. And so um, we were, we've were we been able to see that over the last eight years with clients and, and be able to um, strengthen our understanding of what's the best way to go about this, as well as um, for myself, it, it's something that um, I have found such a, a deeper uh, enjoyment for the day-to-day because, I mean, I am someone who really likes to shoot for the stars from a mm-hmm. goal standpoint, sometimes so painfully outlandish that everyone kind of looks at me sideways. Um, and if I was to get too caught up in those factors, I would be miserable 99% of the time. And the 1% of the time that I'm actually at the goal and allowing for myself to um, enjoy that would be fleeting, very fleeting. Mm-hmm. And I think that the more that I've I've grown and the more that I've matured, one of the big things is that I've fallen in love with the process, not only within my, my goals from like a fitness standpoint or um, a life standpoint, but like my relationships, our relationship, mm-hmm. all those things, really focusing on how can I just be better today and what can I focus on today um, being such a, a beneficial piece. Yeah, and I feel like so many times people, focus on where they want to go and not exactly how they're going to get there. Because we know that so much of it is in the mundane. It's in the daily. It's in the consistency. It's the boring stuff that you do time and time again that gets you to that success. But so many times people just look at, okay, I want to get to this point. And then they just like without really any direction, go towards that goal. And if you don't have directions, getting someplace can be very difficult. I will say as someone who is bad at directions in general, even if I have them. Right. And, and I think that when we are looking at goals and and doing the daily task, uh, we talk often of what gets tracked gets managed. And so if you're not paying attention to those daily uh, tasks and, and the um things that you have to do on a day-to-day basis, you're going to find yourself not accomplishing the goal for one, but also not knowing what needed to be different for you to have changed that goal or to have accomplished that goal. And so by being able to uh, track and, and manage those things, you have a better understanding of why you may have fallen short or those different factors. I'm super glad that you brought that up as far as like what gets measured gets managed because when we look at focusing on the bigger goal, you can get lost in that a lot of the times because you look at, I want to accomplish X. So whether it's, I want to lose 15 pounds or I want to be able to have the best business ever or I want to have an incredible marriage. When you just focus on, okay, I want this to happen, that's so broad and you're not thinking about, again, those steps that it takes to get to that spot. And there's so much to be said about those individual steps that allow you to have more joy when going through the process and the journey instead of just focusing on that outcome. So when it comes to to clients, how do you really lay out those different steps or try to push them to and enjoy the process? What are the things that you talk about with them? I think that um, when I'm speaking to clients directly, I think that laying out a roadmap because of the experience that I do have and, and understanding what their goal is, as well as how they're wanting to approach it from a, a lifestyle standpoint, or are they wanting to, is it from a, a competitor standpoint? So the pace in which it's being set is really important to be stated. Um, I think that putting proper expectations in place and being honest is a huge piece of that. And then what are the tools that need to be most prioritized within their, their goals? So their, their training intensity, their, the biofeedback markers within their sleep and their stress and how they're taking care of their body and nourishing their body, um, are all going to play a very equal role in it all. I I think that, um, unfortunately when we look at fitness goals, it's something that, uh, many individuals try to greater prioritize something within it all. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that it just, all of it needs to be taken seriously. All of it needs to be taken, um, with a a greater priority as a, um, 
as you're, you're going about the goals themselves and um, making sure that every day you're just ticking the box and, and making sure that everything is being well tracked. Because as we just you know, talked about it being something where if we don't have the ability to, to track those things and something is going sideways or not going how we expected, we don't necessarily know what to, to pick at. And mm-hmm. uh, especially when you have a client who's coming in who maybe hasn't been tracking their nutrition the best beforehand, hasn't been training all that hard beforehand, no supplementation, not prioritizing their sleep, you're changing a lot when they come in. And so if they're not tracking these metrics, we don't know what of the application um, could be off or, or those different aspects. And so, um, and, and that kind of goes for individuals who are, are changing their nutrition or changing their training along their goal. Um, try not to change multiple different factors at the same exact time. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit different when you're starting with a coach because you're getting incorporated into their system, you're getting incorporated into how things work, um, and there's a lot of moving parts and you have to give yourself grace during that. Um, but a- aligning with uh, the things that you can control and the things that you can track and not putting too many things um, in place that are changing is, is really important. Yeah. And the right process will bring the right results. When you really look at it, that's what builds up to the results. So let's say that you want to ace an exam. Just saying you want to ace an exam doesn't do anything for you actually acing that exam. It comes down to breaking it down of, okay, what am I going to do to ace that exam? I'm going to take time studying and not just saying I'm going to study because that's, again, extremely broad of how is this going to fit into my schedule and am I checking those boxes that allow me to get to that end result. And so always bringing it back to the right process will bring the right results. And within that process, like if you say, I want to lose 15 pounds and you come into a coaching experience. And like Alex said, you're not tracking all of those metrics. Like we don't know why you're not losing weight. And so it comes down to, all right, what are the things that we need to look at? And you can't necessarily will the scale to just lower, but you can do the processes and the like the things that need to be done to accomplish that. And so being able to say, okay, I prioritize sleep. I got my water down. I got my steps in. I did my training sessions. Those are all the things that you can control. So that's another important point of control the controllables. You can't always will an outcome to happen, but you can control the process and control the controllables on your way to that goal or to that outcome. And and I think that when we look at the um, the process and the timeline, looking at it from like a 15 pound perspective, um, if you are going to say, I'm going to lose 15 pounds in eight weeks, that's a little outlandish depending on where you are currently at from a body composition standpoint. And so being able to understand what that timeline looks like is going to one, allow for your expectations to be in, the, in a proper position and not allow for you to be let down inadvertently for something that you didn't even, it was like, it was outlandish when you said it, um, but like you weren't, it was unlikely you were going to achieve it, but in your mind, it was like, this is what I'm setting out to do. So understand that component of things um, as as well as knowing the pieces that are really you know making the puzzle come together um, it is really important. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah, for sure. And it also makes it easier to spot what you need to change. Because if you have, again, a checklist or a step-by-step or boxes that you need to be able to fill, if those aren't coming to fruition, you're able to take a step back and look and think, all right, why am I not getting there? So you're you're self-auditing and you're being honest with yourself and having those conversations instead of, again, if you're not tracking any 
anything or looking at anything. It's just, why am I not losing 15 pounds? Why did I not ace that test? Why is this not happening in my life? Where you're able to see, okay, this box was checked. This box was checked. This box wasn't checked. Why wasn't that checked? Is it something I wasn't doing? Was it circumstantial? What was the process or what is the reason for getting to that process? And so it really allows you to be more reflective along the way. And it makes it so much clearer too. Like when we talk about SMART goals, which I know we've mentioned before, it really breaks down like how you build out your goals of making them specific, making them measurable, making them um, timely, making them attainable, like you're breaking down all of those aspects of a goal to get to that instead of just saying, I want to lose 15 pounds. That's not a smart goal. It's smart to lose 15 pounds if you want to, but in regards of the acronym, like you're not making it specific by saying, I want to lose 15 pounds in 16 weeks and I'm going to do it by X, Y, and Z. That's where you're really going to achieve what you want to achieve. And as Alex mentioned, as far as having more enjoyment along the way, I have so much more personal enjoyment by focusing on that step-by-step, that day-by-day, because I'm able to realize what that means, not only for the bigger picture, but understand that those all compile to make the bigger picture. So I'm able to find more fulfillment by recognizing each day I'm taking a step towards that picture instead of feeling like I'm just hopeless and like yearning for this goal that's sitting in front of me. And when we look at goals in general, we have to start with a a planning phase because if we just look at the goals, we continue to reiterate, um, it's daunting. It Mm -hmm. can be very overwhelming and it can be something where, um, you just constantly are reiterating it to yourself and you feel like you're taking action, but it's, it's, not even necessarily sloppy action. You're just kind of like anxious action because you don't really want to put enough effort forward to really start to plan and and put the realization of like how long this goal really may take. But you just continue to reiterate to yourself of like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And I think that a lot of people fall into that. And then it just never really comes to fruition because they're unable or unwilling to sit down and really plan out how that's going to happen. Like if this is something you really want to make happen, what are the steps to get there? And so if you're looking at, let's let's look at, uh, let's move away from 15 pounds. Everybody's tired uh-huh. of hearing about 15 pounds. Um, let's look at something, let's like our first house. Mm-hmm. Let's look at how we went about, um, like what were the steps that we looked at of, uh, you know, assessing our, our budget, understanding what it was going to take from a month to month standpoint to save, to be able to have the finances to do that. Um, and, what else would the the planning process be within that kind of goal? Yeah, I think one of the first things was setting the budget so we could tell the realtor like, hey, what range are we even looking at here? And well, what it was even does before seem, we you know met with the realtor. Yeah, yeah, was just like sitting down between you and I, figuring out what that looked like. But it also was getting in touch with a title company, uh, or not a title company, a mortgage company, being able to send over our taxes. Even before that, like you're talking, we've you're at the point of us already having looked at houses, decided on it. Like we hadn't done any of that when we first started talking about buying a house. Okay. Then yeah. what did we do? <laughs> what were the steps? <laughs> I mean, people aren't going to start talking about getting a house and go mortgage company, realtor, like they're going to look at what are we capable of doing? Where are our finances at? Where do we want to live? And then what can we afford as a whole from like a month to month payment, down payment, all those different things. And so I think that getting that put into place was like the first step. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you were going in a little bit different direction. And I was thinking, okay, once you get the budget, there's like what you think you can, and then it's what you're approved for, and then it's all that jazz. Um, but it did start with us like having kind of non-negotiables of what we were looking for in a house. Cutting things out in our, our life, like mm-hmm. making sure that we could save that amount of money from a month-to-month standpoint. Um, and like sitting down and going through that, not just saying we're going to save. Right. It was looking at the numbers, looking at 
at the budget, seeing where things either needed to be cut out or where things could be saved and like really going through specifics. It wasn't just we are going to save. Exactly. Um, and then it was really getting specific of making sure we were on the same page. Because when you go to looking at houses, even if it's just online of looking through Zillow or whatever, like there were things that maybe I liked that you weren't the biggest fan of or things that were a must for me that were just kind of like, oh, okay, for you. Mm -hmm. And like nailing down, okay, what are we looking for in a house? And we had written it down of like, these are the things that are needed for us to even take that step forward for an, for that house. Right. And, and having those things on paper gave such a level of peace of mind. Because if we went into that uh, first appointment with a real estate agent and was we were like, okay, this is how much we plan to spend just because we had kind of spitballed an idea of what we could spend, that would have been extremely overwhelming if we hadn't done the due diligence and planning beforehand of like, no, we know this is where we're at. This is where we've saved. We feel comfortable with this. Um, and so that is something that I think just gaining the peace of mind by planning with large goals, small goals, all those things is such an important piece that um, people would more often, and I fall into this too sometimes, like mm -hmm. I fall into this where um, sometimes I would rather just say that I want to do something mm -hmm. and like not really dig myself into it because I know what it's gonna take type situation. Um, and so that's really challenging. But if you like allow for yourself to set aside the time to do the intentional upfront work, it's going to give you so much more peace of mind, as well as give you a true trajectory of what you're looking at from a timeline perspective and not expect yourself to be able to do these goals in a fraction of the time because it's like, well, I want it to happen. It's yeah. like, well, it doesn't really, I mean, <laughs> I want a billion dollars today. I don't think that I'm going to be getting a billion dollar check. But you want it to happen. I, I want it to happen. <laughs> I, I, Which I'm Alex taught me a lot about because he was one of the first people, maybe it wasn't questioning me specifically, but that I saw openly questioning people's goals and not in a negative way, but in a like, how are you going to make that happen? So if someone vocalizes a goal to Alex and just kind of like puts it out into the universe, <laughs> he's likely going to ask, all right, and how do you plan to make that happen? Yeah. And then if you answer, I don't know, he is done caring about the conversation <laughs> uh, because he hates that answer. So don't give him the answer of, I don't know. Yeah. But like that was helpful to see him do that for other people because then it started to have the gears turning in my head of like, if I do want a goal to happen, how do I want it to happen? How am I going to get there? And even taking something like, as we've talked about, of posting three times a week um, on YouTube, like that took a lot of planning and navigating before we could really say, this is exactly what we're going to do. And we had said it the year before of like, we're going to be consistent on social or on YouTube and never sat down, never really made a plan for it. And then what do you know? We weren't. Exactly. And then coming into this year, we have meetings like at least once a week going over like what we're filming, what's going up. We have ways to go through what the schedule is that multiple people have access to that are all involved in it. And we have like excessive communication about what needs to go up when and when things need to be filmed to give Miguel enough time to get them edited or David enough time to we go through. We still need to give Miguel we way need to more give time. Miguel way more time. <laughs> um, but like we plot all of that out. It's not just we record and we're like, hope this video goes up yeah. or even just within the video. Uh, we don't just free ball it. We have to sit down and make notes. And that's why we have our iPads during these uh, podcasts is like to really accomplish what we want to accomplish. You have to take some more time and put some more thought into it. And that's where I kind of lost things growing up as I was just like, well, this is what I want to happen or this is my goal. And I never really been taught about sitting down and either reverse engineering or mapping out exactly how that was going to happen because goals either happened or they didn't for me. And that's just kind of how things went until I realized, hey, you have a lot more control in this matter than you think, which was also a part of the reward because you realize like you have capabilities and like there's a lot to do with your ability that makes those things move forward. You guys are learning one of my greatest pet peeves. And that great pet peeve is you can't complain if you don't have an actionable plan to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, it really gets under my skin. Now, as Sue and I have been together and we have grown in our relationship, I have learned a level of empathy that I <laughs> previously did not have. And so I would use that rule for everything. I have learned as I've grown and matured <laughs> that there are moments that you are able to complain 
and there are things that happen in your life that you don't need an actionable plan right that moment to fix it. Like Mm -hmm. it is okay. There are moments, very few, Mm -hmm. significantly less than what you're thinking. (laughs) (laughs) It's significantly less um, that that is okay. But not having a plan, if you're, if you're going to complain, then you have to have a plan to fix it. And this is what I say oftentimes uh, when Sue is is making my food. And she's like, why didn't you say anything about not liking it? Because I often say, well, because I wasn't gonna get my ass up and, and cook it myself. <laughs> so I'm not gonna and complain so I'm not gonna about complain. it. If I wanted to complain, I could make it myself type situation. Yeah. And so thinking in that context oftentimes puts you in a much more, I don't know if it's necessarily optimistic, but more at least positive headspace of like, yo, own up to your, own up to what's going on um, and be honest with yourself of like, what do you really want to accomplish? If you really want to accomplish these goals and the things that you have in front of you, you would put a plan in place. You wouldn't just aimlessly move through life and and be like, I want to be the best fitness coach in the world. I want to be the best at X, Y, and Z. It's like, no, you don't. You're like, you're not taking any actionable uh, task, you know, actions towards that. And so be honest with yourself. And I think that that's the, a massive part of just goal setting and goal achieving is, is honesty within yourself. Yeah. And it it takes discipline. It takes self-awareness and like your effort becomes your success. And that's what we're talking about when it talks about like being more rewarded in the journey than just reaching the goal is because your effort does become the success. Your self growth becomes the success. You checking that box becomes a win instead of, I didn't reach my goal yet. It was a win that I checked the box to get one step closer to my goal. And so it just allows you to like be more honest with yourself, be more open to feedback, be able to audit and to truly take inventory of what you're doing and see the small details. And those details stack up to the result. And that's what you can focus on instead of thinking my physique isn't where I want it to be. Well, I don't think like anyone's physique is exactly where they want it to be. Like people can always say that they want more things happening within their physique. But if I look back to three or four years ago and I say, well, my physique's just not where I want it to be, instead of just continuously focusing on what are the wins to get there, then these past three or four years would likely be kind of disappointing. But instead, I was able to not only achieve a better physique, but have more like self-accomplishment and more self-love and more self-growth because I took time to look at the process, examine the process, and recognize the right process brings the right results. And I'm standing here, well, sitting here, and like showing that like the results that I've seen within my physique, and I could give a million other examples, came from being able to have the right process in place and enjoying that process. And so you have to be able to find like what are those little things that you enjoy. And for me, it's like the accomplishment of knowing I uh, I did something I said I was going to do, which we've talked about before of how much that goes towards like your self-trust and your ability to accomplish great things is doing what you said you were going to do. Um, but it's also being able to see like how those little box ticks like make you feel. So for example, if we're going within physiques of um, or even just mental health, like going out on walks and getting away from my screen, getting out in the air and nature has been so, so, so beneficial for me. But if I sat there and didn't celebrate what that brought into my life and just looked at, well, I'm not where I want to be yet, or I'm not at the end goal, that would take a lot of the joy out of those walks. Where those walks are such a special time of my day, whether it's with these crazy Yahoo dogs that pull my arm off, or it's with my husband, or it's with our neighbor, or it's by myself, like it brings a lot of joy for me and a lot of accomplishment of you did something you said you were going to do. It made you feel better. You had better digestion because of it. You have better focus, better productivity, and all of these things instead of saying, I'm just not where I want to be. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled. And I look forward to speaking with you. Let's hone in on... um, something you said earlier in that and and focus on effort. Because mm-hmm. I, for a long time, really up until this year, I equated effort is work ethic. And, and the harder I work, the more effort that I'm putting in and that effort is just going to continue to accelerate me. And I found out this year that there is only so much 
work ethic that I can have that is going to uptick that effort uh, or, or that effort being applied and it being in a positive manner because there's only so many hours in the day, there's only so much bandwidth that you have. And I, for a very long time, wore my work ethic um, as as a, a massive badge of honor. Like it mm-hmm. was the thing that um, really drove my personal self-worth up until this year. And there's been a lot of tears cried from these eyes this year because of that factor of me having this push, push, push of like, all I have to do is just work harder and, and realizing that that was not the, no longer the card that I could pull and, and be able to, or the lever that I could pull and, and continue to have success. I had to work in different ways. Um, I grew up in a, an environment where my dad worked 16 hour days, six to seven days a week, every single week. And he's still to this day and he's a psychopath. And so I have that as like my North star of, um, work ethic. And I've always like, that was what he did to, to provide for my sister and I and, and my mom. And um, that's what I've always you know viewed as, as what was the best way to achieve success. And uh, you know, within that, I've learned this year that there are other ways to work hard. There mm-hmm. are ways to work smarter. It's a weird concept. Um, and not being so like nose to the grindstone, I have to do everything mentality. And I, I, I assume that there are certainly listeners that fall into that category where they feel as though that work ethic is everything. And if you don't work, like no one works harder than me. It's like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that work harder than me. Um, my dad works harder than me for sure. <laughs> um, and we have different you know, pay grades within that. And it doesn't have to do with the, the work ethic that's there. It's um, you know, the job that's being done and, and how it's being done, how we're uh, utilizing uh, people around us, resources around us and those different aspects. And so um, I think that coming to the effort component, what have you learned this year when it comes to effort within your goals and, and how different that may look? Yeah, I think it's just that like the the effort is rewarding because it is pushing you forward and it is having like self growth and it's allowing you to show up for yourself. Like putting effort forth should be something that you do every day with everything in your life. Right. Like I put effort into having nice skin. I put effort into um, like looking a certain way. I put effort into our relationship. I put effort into my fitness goals. I put effort into PD for freaking sure. I put a lot of effort forth every single day. So effort should basically be like the, the bare minimum of like where things are at. And then above that effort comes what – what else needs to be done other than just caring or putting time forth into it? And that's where you're talking about like just working smarter sometimes is is the aspect. And I think that when it comes to looking at this year specifically of what I've learned with effort and what it's really taught me is that you have to put effort forth and it's not always dependent on I put more effort forth than someone else. It's more dependent on like how you're able to really look at a situation and see what needs to change from that situation. So it's not just working hard, but it's taking time to look at what you're working hard on and seeing, again, like what steps need to be taken to make it better. Because I've always worked hard as far as being a coach, but I feel like each year I become a better coach. And it's not just due to working hard and putting in effort. It's due to caring about the quality of that work and pulling back and looking at, okay, where are things going that might I might want to go in a different direction? And so I think effort is just, again, like the bare minimum of you should give effort, but I don't think it needs to be you need to work the most or the hardest from anyone. It's looking at how smart you can work and how efficient you can be within your effort and how open you can be to getting feedback from that effort. Like it's been helpful to have your and Miguel's feedback specifically just because I'm around you two the most of like when I'm filming of, hey, you could have said this better or you could have done this better. I'm still putting effort forth. I'm not working any less hard, but getting that feedback is so extremely important or being open to hearing someone else's point of view and seeing their perspective and recognizing like that didn't lower my effort. That didn't take away from my effort, but there are ways to still improve from this. 
How many times do you guys th- think that she just said effort in that small <laughs> <laughs> I The other thing I wanted to add to it is that um, one thing that has uh, changed this year is the trying to create the facade of things being effortless for me, mm-hmm. where I wanted it to come across that social media was effortless for me. Gain or uh, attaining clients was effortless for me. Um, the knowledge that I have worked so hard to uh, create and um, further has been effortless for me. And the reality is that none of those things are effortless for <laughs> none. me. Literally, none of them are effortless. And I think that the the um, action of trying to make it look effortless to other people for it to be cool or to be like, oh my gosh, you're, you're so interesting. Why is this so effortless for you? Um, is only hurting you in the, in the grand scheme of things. And I came to find that out, I feel like over the last year or two and um, applying effort is one, significantly more uh, fulfilling and uh, something that allows for you to actually have reason as to why things are working or why they're not working. And when you try to play this game of like, everything is effortless, everything's so easy for me, don't worry about me. When things don't go well, it's like, well, you ain't doing shit anyway. Mm-hmm. So what needs to change? And uh, and I, I think that that's you know, something that, because it's easy to not try and like that's your excuse always. Mm -hmm. But if you do try now, it's like, I'm putting myself out there, I'm being vulnerable. So now I have to be more accountable to myself, but I also have to be in a situation that I'm accountable to those that I'm showing up for and and, and being vulnerable to type situation, especially from a social media standpoint where you're just putting yourself out there on this free app, um, where in our case, from an educational content standpoint, um, people can formulate their own opinions pretty quickly. And it's like, dude, you're seeing like this amount of, of what's being put out and you're going to, you know, create your opinion or, or, um, give your feedback or what have you. I'm getting off on a side tangent, but, um, <laughs> those yeah, are welcome to here. Exactly. So I think that those things are, um, effort is a, a very interesting component. And I think that as you continue to apply more effort into the things that you really care about, the more fulfilled that you feel. And I know that may sound really, simple and, and, um, easy, but it's really not like putting, putting effort into things, holds you accountable and put you in a position. If you fall on your face, like that's hard. And that's on you. Exactly. (laughs) Like you tried and you didn't succeed. Like you really put everything you had into it and fell short. And that can be super duper challenging, but I have learned that that is so much more fulfilling to me than the opposite of Mm -hmm. being like, I didn't even try. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously I didn't succeed. I didn't try. Mm -hmm. So it's like this, this easy way to just have a cop out. But as soon as you allow for yourself to lose that, it's such a powerful moment for you. Yeah. And I feel like when you start trying to act like things are effortless, then you start getting mad at yourself for things taking effort Yeah, where it's like, you can start to be like, oh, that's like kind of effortless for me. That's just part of things. And then you realize either that thing starts to slip because you're not even budgeting time for it or putting it in your schedule because, oh, it's effortless for me, where it's like, that's not the case. So even with social media, when I was planning out all of my posts and getting them, that was good. That took effort. Um, But then just kind of getting to each day and being like, what am I going to post on social media? Still takes effort, but it's a completely different type of effort and how you're showing up for your yourself. Um, So when it comes to like circling back to about the process and about um, not just the end goal, what are things that you find joy in with the process, whether it is within your fitness goals or with business? What are those small pockets of the process that you find a lot of joy in? I find a lot of joy in when I lay my head down at the end of the night that I did what I said I was going to do. I kept the promises to myself from the beginning of the day and I'm able to lay down and know that I showed up for myself. And so that's the thing that I look forward to the most every single day to be able to have that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's fulfilling throughout the day. You feel better throughout the day, staying on task, staying focused um, for the things that matter to you the most. We have so many distractions in our life at this moment where we have multiple social media platforms that are fighting for our attention 24 seven. Then we have 
life and, and things going on there that are pulling for our uh, attention. And then we also have the list of things that we actually want to do on a day-to-day basis. And some of those things from life and, and from social media may be part of that list, but those things don't need to distract from our day and they can so easily do so. And so being able to stay focused and stay on task is such a just mood booster as well as, um, creating momentum for you from a day-to-day perspective. If you can uh, stack days that are uh, very positive and you you stack those wins and, and those different factors, it it is it builds a relentless form of yourself that cannot be beat. And the more that you focus on those factors, what other individuals say, like if someone was to say something mean to you on social or, or to you in person, you're so confident in what you're doing because you're keeping those promises to yourself that what that person said or, or what that person is is talking about doesn't phase you because you're so focused on, on what you have going on. And so I think that those things are the, the most powerful that I take from a day-to-day perspective of just being able to build that momentum and then also being able to lay my head down at night and be like, hell yeah, dude, you did it today. Yeah, you like, freaking did that. Exactly. Like you, you earn, like, I know that people are like, you don't need to earn your rest and you don't, I think you do. <laughs> like, I think you need to show up every day and earn that time to be able to have that quality of sleep. You earn that like feeling of like that, what you did. I think that you don't necessarily need to like earn rest in the fact of if you didn't do all of your stuff that day, like you still deserve to rest. Yeah. But I'm very much in the same headspace yeah, yeah, of yeah. you of like that feeling as you're going to bed makes the night so much better yeah. than like the restless of like what could have happened today or what could have this day been or what would have pushed the needle forward for this day if I showed up for myself. Yeah. And, and I think that like when I lay down, there's a there's times where if I sit at my office desk all day, which I hate when I do that, mm-hmm. but unfortunately there's days where I do it, my mind is exhausted. Like my mind is beat. My brain is not connecting words any longer, (laughs) but my body has just been sitting all day. And my body's like, bro, we need some love. We need to go get some sun. We need to go get some steps. If it's a day we're training, we need to go do that. And so I'm laying there and my body is still trying to calm down where my mind is like, bro, we have nothing. We're negative in the energy (laughs) task. And so, exactly. (laughs) So that's like one of my least favorite feelings when I don't show up for one end of myself where it's like, is my body and my mind been challenged today? Those are things that I really want to check off the list every day. Um, And is, is, it's significantly fulfilling. Yeah. I think the process just gives me direction. It doesn't make me feel so aimless. And like you said, it gives you confidence and it makes you sure of yourself. Because if someone says something, I have the game plan. I have the roadmap in front of me of what I need to do. And I've said before, but I'm so good at execution. If you tell me what to do, I'll do it. And so I tell myself what to do. I give myself a list of this is the game plan. This is the roadmap. This is the action that needs to be taken for you to have a good day or a good month or a good year or to reach your goal. And that's so rewarding because just having that sense of confidence, having that peace of mind and knowing that, again, you're just controlling the controllables along the way instead of feeling beat up because you're so aimless and you're just taking other people's opinions on and you're Again, you're aimless, wandering through towards your goals, and that's really defeating. And so the process is a bajillion times more rewarding for me because that's where the direction is. And as long as I'm on the right path and I'm I'm checking the boxes and I'm executing, like that's all that really matters to me. And that's that allows so much clarity within my brain specifically of just like, okay, here's the path, just take it, instead of it bumping around of like, I don't know, but here's the goal. Hope you get there. Um, So for me, it's just such a feeling and such a sense of peace and being able to know I just got to control the controllables. I just have to check the boxes and I'm on the right path. I think as as an adult, you start to realize this, that a lot of the rules that were placed are put into place when you were a child of doing your laundry, keeping your room clean and, and doing your homework before you do fun stuff. Um, 
you know, reign true. Like having those guidelines in place allow for you to have better focus. And uh, like having focus is one of the most powerful things I mm -hmm. think that you can have in life is the the level of focus and not just allowing for your brain to bounce around on 15 different things. And going back to the social media component of, of um, what we were talking about earlier is that if you're just opening apps and, and checking Twitter and checking Instagram, checking TikTok, and then you're also trying to do your work and then also trying to text back your friend um, and then checking your email, it's like, how on God's green earth do you expect to focus on anything? Mm -hmm. Like if you're giving yourself these little like just short stimulus, boom, 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 and just constantly uh, going at different things. Like how do you anticipate that you're able to do much of anything? And I can tell you that in, in, like being someone who has run into this many a times, and it's something that I'm combating every single day. Some days are better, some days are worse. And the the days where I let the the things kind of bounce around is the days that I feel so drained mm -hmm. for no reason. And it's like, I actually did nothing. I just kind of was just like aimlessly doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And it's, it sucks the life out of me. And it is one of my biggest annoyances. The last thing, do you have any other aspects? Okay, I wanna talk about environment. Environment and who you're surrounding yourself with when, you, when it comes to falling in love with the process, because I think this is a huge piece. Mm -hmm. So when we look at the, um, we'll talk about the the friends and, and who you're surrounding yourself with before we talk about environment. So when we look at the, the people that you're surrounding yourself with, what are some of the things that you are, are honing in on from a characteristic standpoint, um, as well as what are you trying to bring to the table um, that you are are you know pushing out energy wise that are are positive that those people are feeling attracted to you as well. Mm -hmm. I think this is extremely pertinent, especially within moving within the last year of we're introduced to a lot of new people and a lot of new experiences. And I sometimes feel bad when I leave certain social situations and I've already kind of decided in my mind like I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this person. And that doesn't come out of a place of oh this person is the worst. And I hate them. It's just more so looking at who is in line with like what mentality does this person have towards life? And is that something that I feel is going to add or take away from my life? And that's not to say that everyone needs to serve you and to always be making your life 100% better, but it's really like taking that into consideration of how does this person, the way that they talk and the way they speak about life, what they want for their life, what their dreams are. How they talk about themselves. How they talk about themselves. Like, is that something I want to be around constantly? Is that something I want to spend my time on constantly? And again, not to say that you can never be around someone who speaks poorly about themselves or has a day that they're not feeling the greatest about their goals and you should just cancel them out of your life, but really just being able to be conscientious of how that's impacting you. Because when I look back, especially when I was like in high school and college, I was surrounding myself with anyone and everyone and not even paying mind to how it was affecting me and my energy. And I get frustrated of like wondering in that time frame, I was like, why don't I feel better? And it's like, you're literally just letting things seep in and out, like everyone's energy has access to your energy and everyone has access to your time and that's a-okay and you should just want to be friends with everyone and while I I care about being friendly and kind and polite to everyone I don't feel like the people I spend the most time with um, like those are the people that I need to be more specific with and I need to have a little bit better filter on before just allowing that into my life. And, and when you're evaluating what those other individuals are bringing into your life, I think you have to be very cognizant of what you're putting into theirs. And so if you're bringing that same BS into their life, like you can't expect them to give you something different in mm -hmm. return. And so you have to be uh, honest with yourself of what you're putting out into the world and you have to change that first. Mm -hmm. And you can't just immediately be like, okay, that person's negative, peace. And then you're just continuing your negative life. Like it has to be something that you change, give time to the people around you. Do they shift the same way or do they continue to try and bring you back down to where a previous version of yourself was, if that's the case, then you've got to move on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that doesn't mean that you have to have a conversation with them of like, yo, I'm not your friend anymore because you're a piece of shit. It's like, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. You can just gradually spend less time with an individual and be able to move into 
individuals who are uplifting you, people who you want to to uh, emulate from their energy, not being like, okay, you have blonde hair. I want blonde hair too. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is start hanging out with you and it's going to, all of a sudden I'm going to yeah. get blonde hair. Um, that's not how that works. And so being very honest with yourself in those scenarios is, is really important. Um, and, and also when we like look at different individuals in your life, like everyone's at different phases. And so people can, can grow and get to the same level, if you will, or phase that you're in and be able to mesh better at that chapter of your life. Mm -hmm. And then into a new chapter, it may just not be the fit. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be individuals in your life that maybe have a, a greater role at different times, and then they may come back in and those different factors. It doesn't have to be a constant of like, we've been friends for 30 years and we talked every single day, but in these this time frame, we did not get along. It's like, just don't fucking spend time together. Yeah. It's that easy. Um, I'm glad that you said of like, you don't have to have a conversation and tell them I'm not going to be your friend anymore. Because I was even a client's check-in recently. If she was like, this was a friend that I kind of started to spend less time with because I realized that they weren't a positive impact on my life. But like recently, like they've shown that they've started to change. And like now I'm welcoming that back into my life. And I think that's really powerful of allowing people to change and realizing that you've probably changed too whether it's for the better or the worse, right. like you change as you grow and as you experience life and as different things happen to you. And so being able within Alex's example of like people are going to come in and out of your life and they're going to be there for different times. And also like I'm not expecting everyone I'm friends with to be at the exact same level of life at me. I'm just expecting for you to have a positive mentality about life. And that can look so different. We can have different views on things. We can have different likes and different dislikes. We can be in extremely different parts of our life. But if you show like one big thing for me personally is like, I need to see effort that you want more out of life instead of just saying that you want more out of life. Because as soon as you show me that you're okay staying at the level that you're at, that's when I start to kind of tap out of like, well, I, I don't want to be complacent within my life. I want to reach for the stars. And more often than not, that has to do with like self-development. Yeah. I don't want people to take this as like, when we say levels, it's like this person's better than this person. That's no, not yeah, what we're yeah. saying. It's more of like self-development rather than it being materialistic. Mm -hmm. And so the last thing we'll talk about is is environment and and how you're taking care of yourself, how you're showing up every day, and then also how you're taking care of the things within your environment, whether it's like a um, – a hundred dollar computer or a ten thousand dollar computer how are you treating that how are you treating your space as a whole are you keeping it tidy and 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 taking care of the things that you do have or are you like that thing's cheap but i don't i want something better it's like well you're probably not going to treat that new thing a whole lot better and i think that this all kind of goes in um, alignment with the process and, and understanding like when you're going for goals all these different things like play these micro roles and you accomplishing uh, the goal that you have and like putting some of these things off doesn't uh, doesn't help you. Mm -hmm. it, it, it could be the one piece that just needs to be moved into place that allows for you to show up better for yourself. Um, and, and I'm not sitting here saying like, you should make your bed every day. We don't make our bed every day. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you there are a lot of things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis that like the listeners themselves may not be doing that would uplift their day. And so you have to be able to, to pick and choose what's going to be best for you. I can assure you making my bed does not affect me mm -hmm. um, because it's, I'm going to pull down the sheet again. I don't go back in there for yeah. the whole day. Most of the time we don't go back in until I'm it's never bedtime. Back. If I was, if I, so if I was in college and I had my desk and I was working in there every day, yeah. that's then, a different yes. situation. Or like it was a loft situation or like a studio it's, apartment yeah, it's exposed, where it's in the area. It's part of my environment, like from a day-to-day -day perspective, but literally I'm waking up and then I'm going back to sleep. That's the only time I'm in there. But I will say that like our cleanliness of our room has played right. a big role. That's of, like a big we thing. used to have clothes on the floor and just random stuff on the floor. And now like the floor is always clear other than the dog beds. Like there's never anything no. on the floor unless Closets. we walked in with like our shoes and we took them off like right by the bed. But like that's huge of that used to affect how we slept. And mm -hmm. we talked about how important sleep is. And even just something like cleaning the room, which I used 
used to be I've talked about a major slob and that's really improved like my quality of life is becoming a cleaner and more organized person. Now, I'm not Mrs. Organized. It's not like everything <laughs> in my life is in a special folder and now I'm going to teach other people how to be organized with everything. But I've definitely taken a few steps up when it comes to cleanliness and organization and it's only helped my headspace and it's only helped kind of my relationship with myself because I would walk past and I'd be like, this room is a piece of shit. You've left your stuff everywhere. Why can't you clean up? And then also like how I thought other people were thinking about it and all these other emotions that were going into it when it's like, you could just clean that up and then that's not an issue anymore. Or even like my skin of like, I've struggled with my skin most of my life. And it wasn't until recently that my skin started to get a lot clearer. And a lot of it had to do with just simple habits that I started to do. And I put the responsibility on myself. And instead of being like, oh, I never have clear skin, I decided I'm going to do these habits that are going to be really important. And I'm going to do them for X amount of time frame. And if my skin isn't cleared up, then I can complain. But then I can't if I haven't done those things because I know that those are the steps needed to accomplish it. Right. I think that like for for me, it's my office being very clean and like my car, my, my closet, those things that I'm consistently in on a day-to-day basis, the gym, those things being very clean and, and well-kept are extremely important for me just to stay as focused as possible. And so uh, if you guys would like to hear more of those type of things, or we can dig into more of the nuance of like my, like my computer screen and how I <laughs> yeah. deal with all of that, uh, we could certainly dig into that. But thank you guys for, for tuning in today. Feels like it was a little all over the place, but still targeted. I think it was good. It was just a genuine conversation. Yeah, good Um, conversation, just about how we feel truly about the process. Yeah. Because there's only so much you can say about the process is better than the journey without like giving examples and having conversation about what it truly means for us. Right. And we appreciate you guys liking, viewing, and subscribing if you're on YouTube. If you're on a whatever podcast platform, leave us a review. We greatly appreciate you and have a beautiful day.